We are here with Jordan Lind. He is the co-founder of Clearus Water Solutions. Jordan, welcome to the Bloom Room. Thanks for being on our show. Thanks, guys. Great to see you. So Clearus has this water cleaning technology and you use PBRs. Can you kind of help explain what that is? Yeah, uh, I think we kind of laughed about this earlier, but uh, PBR in in most circles is something that we drink at, at tailgates before football games. Um, but in this case, it stands for, it's an acronym for photobioreactor. It's essentially a transparent or translucent tube that allows light to penetrate it and becomes a controlled environment for the ability to maximize the growth of the algae. So we use photobioreactors as a main component of optimizing the productivity of the biology to ultimately clean the water. And why do you use algae to clean the water? When you look to nature on how mother nature cleans water systems or deals with excess nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen in the water, it creates algae blooms. So we took that natural process and said, if we can move it upstream into the wastewater plant and control that algae bloom in our environment, instead of letting it happen naturally um, in rivers, lakes, and streams, do we have a solution here? Short answer is yes. So we find these algae blooms happening in nature. It's a huge problem. The solution is not to try to uh, stop the algae bloom from happening in nature, but actually use the algae bloom at the utility or at the point source of emission. How does that work from a business perspective? How does how is it getting the utilities on board? Is that is that a challenge? Yeah, I mean it's always a challenge in any circle to introduce innovation and and new technology. In this space, utilities tend to be the most risk averse clients. But they're also, there's also a transition right now to find more sustainable approaches to water treatment and understanding that water is a valuable asset, that they are, no, that they are not, not really going to look at their facilities anymore as wastewater treatment. They're going to look at them as wastewater resource recovery, right? So there's a lot of resources that exist within these in, environments that they've Sort of, sort of just traditionally looked at as treatment and disposal, and now it's resource recovery. So that sort of wave and that movement has really accelerated the acceptance of what we're doing. Ultimately, I think it's a combination of the technology being really effective and, and, and performing at exceptional levels combined with sort of just an overall cultural shift, a paradigm shift in um you know, globally, which is to say we have to do things more sustainably. We have to, we have to not engineer things from a, a, a make, use, and dispose standpoint. We've got to put, you know, products back into recirculation. So, so what are the benefits that the utilities or these factories that are wastewater polluters, what do they get out of using algae for using the clearest technology? As, as we learn more about the importance of water, Tighter restrictions get put on how much water, how high of a level of water quality needs to be generated. And as a result, these facilities are, are investing and have to invest in technology to reach higher levels of quality. So what they get from us is performance. We hit some of the best phosphorus and nitrogen um, water quality standards on the planet, um, removing 90% plus of those um, nutrients from their waste stream. Um, in addition to that, we produce a, a reuse quality water that they can use either upstream in plant operations or which now has a quality level that can be sold to industrial plants that um, are looking for an alternative source. Um, third, we actually end up entering into a long-term contract with them to purchase the biomass so that our partnership in the long term works really efficiently, which is the ability to take that co-product um, and use it in more innovative ways as, as a material to displace uh, you know, hydrocarbons. And so they get those benefits. Um, and then I would say the last one is they love to talk about sustainability. They love to know that their taxpayers or their ratepayers um, believe in and 
associate with doing something that's better for the environment than what was has been traditional. Traditional has been lots of power, um, lots of chemical use, and disposal of those chemicals and landfills. So um, those benefits are are you know real, tangible, and something that they they experience every day. One of the benefits was that they now have a co-product that they can generate from this treatment of wastewater that used to just be purely a cost. How you know? Talk a bit about our collaboration with Clearus and Bloom, and where Bloom represents opportunity to help grow the business model for you guys. Yeah, well, I mean, what's interesting is Bloom and and Clearus. We got together. Oh, I mean, it's been five or six, seven years, right? I mean, we've been collaborating for a long time, and I think we came together just because we we were both innovating around the same space, but approaching it from a completely different perspective. Um, and so that was exciting to see the potential of what we're doing at Point Source Discharge and what you guys had in terms of a vision around material use and application, um, you know, at the time, especially in the footwear industry, but you've broadened uh, your capacity and production and skill sets and innovation into all these different products. I think it's very unique because when we talk to a customer, their first question is, can the, can the technology perform? Answer yes. What do I get in return for the algae and who is ultimately going to buy it? Like, where does that co-product stream come from? And we have the ability to scale the business rapidly, knowing that there's partners that we've been working with for the long term who are growing their own businesses and have demand for what these utilities will be generating in terms of, of the co-product coming off the, the EcoRecover Clearest system. So um, every conversation that we have that's related to customers and building facilities ultimately brings in the Bloom conversation as well. Um, you guys know you've met with many of our customers and partners. Um, we talk about it with them constantly. So having a buyer that is committed to the sustainability aspect and partnered up with us on the on the um, on the co product side is tremendously valuable and helps us accelerate wins in our marketplace. So when we talk about our Bloom Ecofax, one of the critical things is how much water was clean to produce that biomass. So I think it's really important for the listeners to understand that as algae performs photosynthesis, it's essentially capturing the carbon, the nitrogen, the phosphorus from the wastewater. And then through your technology, you are filtering the algae out and allowing the purified oxygenated water back into the environment. Absolutely. The, uh, the whole goal in all of this is ultimately the receiving stream or water body cleanup, right? There's obviously remediation efforts that can happen once an algae bloom has occurred. Our goal is to try to prevent the bloom from ever occurring by putting it in this upstream and controlled environment and forcing it to happen in that environment um, such that, you know, we can, we can prevent the, the responsibility of cleaning something up after it's already occurred. We're, we're trying to do it at the, at the point source, at the head instead of at the tail. What other applications is Clearus exploring the use of biomass? If this really is scalable, it's going to outsur- outsurpass the ability for, to just use it for shoes. What's on the horizon beyond shoes? Yeah, good question. We're uh, So we, we've partnered up and are providing some in the ink space, obviously. You guys, I think, have, have a good relationship in the, in the ink space as well and see some of the innovation that's going on there. The idea of getting rid of carbon black, which is you know, petrochemical-based, um, inks, uh, and replacing that with algae-based inks, plastics, foams, inks, uh, fertilizers, feeds. The markets are there. They are massive, and it's a matter of being able to have constant supply to meet that demand before some of these larger players will convert um, some of their production to, to algae. Perfect. So how can our brand partners help support the Clearest mission and get better adoption across the world for this technology? By Bloom. There you go. Great answer. <laughs> yeah, I think your partners and your brands, you know, innovating with you and finding new applications to increase volume of your product and then us collaborating on how we can support that 
it's it's a I mean it's a natural link between what we're doing in the wastewater world and what you guys are productizing, you know, in in these various foams and 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 plastics markets. So we're really creating from the ground up a new supply chain around turning pollution into value added ingredients for products. Absolutely. We're unlocking the value of of this supply chain that nobody realized existed and we're doing it in a really cool way. Perfect. Well, we thank you for joining us today, Jordan. It's been a pleasure and really excited to see how these new commercial projects uh, finish up and grow. And let's make more impact with algae. Absolutely. Great to see you guys. Algae Uber Alice. (laughs) Thanks, Jordan. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you have an interesting topic that you'd like us to talk about, leave it in the comments below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. We'll see you next time in the Bloom Room.